What's happening, fam? LAR movement still moving. The book is entitled Lessons from a Non-Custodial Father at Amazon Kindle Create Space. The link will be in the description box below. The NFL draft hypocrisy. <clears throat> I see this every year. This, this is pertaining to the Joe Mixon type situations. Every year you see this. This guy has off the field issues, off the field problems. He, he should not be drafted. He did this. He did that. So this should hurt his draft stock. Now, every year, you got a group of young guys who are knuckleheads. But if you're a knucklehead and you got good enough talent, and you're no knucklehead, not a big deal. It's risk versus reward, right? But if you're not really a knucklehead, but you responded to somebody who was out of line, and you, then all of a sudden, you're undraftable. You know, because of his problems. See, the Joe Mixon thing, he got into a fight three years ago. There's another player. There's a rape allegation, right? That he took a polygraph for, you know what I mean? There's another guy who got another fight. It's recently. And here's the hypocrisy that I'm going I'm to touch into. White kid has a bad history, and he's... And he's trying, and he worked himself to be an NFL player. It's a touching story. Black kid gets into trouble, and he worked himself to be able to get into a position to be an NFL player. He's got off the field issues. He might be a problem. Okay. Well, let's change this dynamic a little bit. Because, see, I want to talk about the people like Joe Mixon. And the things that some of these athletes deal with, these young college teenagers, as they come to college, they're teenagers, they want to be in, um, adults in legal age, sometimes by the time they graduate or leave the school. It's a culture problem. Not black culture problem, white culture problem. <laughs> because does anybody ever talk about the culture of, in America, you see an athlete some people are in, oh, oh man, that's such and such. Oh, can I get your autograph? That's one thing. What about the other culture that causes all these problems? The culture of, oh, that's such and such. I'm going to go fuck with them. Yeah. And maybe I can get him into a fight maybe sue him or maybe ruin his career. He can't do anything to me. I can say whatever I want. We, we don't talk about that culture. You know, do do we talk about that culture? Think about that. No, we don't. We let it slide. These guys are you need to they need to control themselves. It's funny that you say these athletes need to control themselves, but the people who instigate altercations with them never seem to have to control themselves. We saw the tape. Yeah. You saw the tapes. What is it gonna take for y'all to get tapes and audio? And, and the tapes prior because a lot of the times these situations don't happen in the window of the tape part of the tape that you deem gruesome and unforgivable y'all never play the shit that happens before that never it's all speculation before that you know especially with these young black players so let me get this right because these young black athletes go to your go to these schools that gives you the carte blanche to just start fights with them and call them nigga every chance you get and something then they have off the field issues if they if they respond okay so so let me get this let, let's put this in a different perspective so if these players were Jewish and every time they went out, people was making Hitler references. Every time they played in the game, people was throwing up Nazi signs and calling them, what is it, kike or some shit like that. You know? And saying this, and it, everywhere they went, were they, are they not supposed to respond? 
What, what, as a matter of fact, would you change the? Would you start kicking people out of the stadium? Would you start changing the rules of etiquette of how you're supposed to just interact with people? You know, if, if people come, men and women, you know, get, get, can walk up to them, spit on them, you know, make make these derogatory statements, maybe make T-shirts laughing at the Holocaust to get your attention while you're playing the game, is, that would be acceptable, right? Because when you got black players, the equivalent is pretty much acceptable. And if they respond to that, you know, they got off the field issues. How about if they were gay? And every time they walked around their campus when they first got there, they'd be like, oh, that's the gay athlete. I'm going to go call him faggot. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Hey, faggot. You know, how about that? How about, you know, um... When, when they're running out of the tunnel at all their events, they got a section of the crowd that paid their tickets to, you know, to call them derogatory terms or make fun of their sexuality, quote unquote, because, you know, they, that needs to be protected, right? How about that? Would that be wrong? If, if they got upset one day and just slapped the shit out of somebody? They could be spit on too, right? Because, you know, if they respond, would they have off the field issues? How about if they were just women? And they ran into a stadium and, you know, they, they, they went to the campus and she's a great female athlete. And they go, they're around all the guys and the guys start calling them bitches and cunts and, you know, you know, telling them how bad, how, how bad they want to fuck them. And this is their, this is their normal practice when they're outside of practice and when they're in the game. You know, people are behind the bench telling them how, you know, what kind of position that they'll put them in or they'll rape them or some shit like that. You know, like I said before, with the with the black players, they'll be doing this stuff in front of their family, their friends, even their kids, you know. So if they got mad and hit somebody upside the head with a Gatorade bottle, would that all of a sudden mean they have off-the-field issues and they're undrafted? What if there was a uh, Hispanic and, you know, they were going places and people were calling them wet back and, um, you know, make America great again. We're building a wall for your family and all that other stuff. This is, this is what would happen everywhere they went. And, they, and, and imagine these people were teenagers. You know, they, they came, this started from, from this is at 18 to 22, right? And they're never supposed to respond to this because if they respond, they... Something's wrong with them. They need to control themselves. They have bad... They need to control themselves. They have bad character. They have character issues. You know, they might wind up drinking because the, the school is telling them, don't respond because you're the bigger person, which in which their reality knows, no, you're telling me don't respond because you're making money off of me right now. And if I respond, it takes money out of your pocket. So you're really looking out for yourself while throwing me under the bus because I'm pursuing my dream. But it's never going to be looked at like that. Because the people that interact with, the, with, with that, with that, if I'm talking about a Hispanic person now, you know, n nobody's going to hold them responsible for their actions. They're not, they're, those actions aren't even going to be wrong. At all. You know, those, it's, it's just being fans. It's just, you know, just... Overly aggressive fans, and you know, and over the years, this this happens to children, you know, teenagers, because you know, you're still a child in the sense of teenager, from teenagers to young adults to adults to grown men who who retire from sports. You know, how many times people got drunk and belligerent and started a fight with a player, spit on a player, spit tried to spit on a player and spit on their child. Threatened their families, got into fights with their families, but they they shouldn't retaliate because once again, you know that they they have issues off the field problems if they do, right? Um, same thing, you know, and I, I don't want to be cold when I say the same thing about dating, 
You know, every year is the, there's the rape allegation. Every year, with every player, you know. And this, and this, and this, this is where everywhere they go, somebody is either trying to pick a fight with them, get into if they can't just pick a fight and it doesn't work, get into a fight with them, instigate a fight, try to try to get into a sexual relationship so they could either say rape or pregnancy, or you know maybe um, destroy their property or steal from them and hope they respond, you know, like Sean Taylor who's no longer here with us because you got to be a bigger person because, and people who, who are defending themselves their family their friends their property are all looked at as people with off the field issues but it's ironic that like I said when I put these issues to other races of people people have a problem with that they would they, they would say look man maybe it's not right that these people these athletes uh, walking around kicking people ass, but y'all need, may need to leave them alone. You can't just go around messing with people just because you feel like um, they're they're good athletes. You don't just go around invading people's personal space. You don't go around starting fights with people. You don't go around fighting people. You don't go around destroying people's property. You don't go around threatening people's families. You don't. That's just not a good idea. But you can say, well. Because I'm not an athlete and I'm just a regular person, I should just be able to get away with it. And hopefully, nobody will want to draft them or you need to take their money or their opportunities that they've earned. Because guess what? I'm I don't have that opportunity. So since I don't have the opportunity, I should be able to sabotage someone else's. And everybody sees this. So you know, like I say, this is my problem with the NFL draft hypocrisy because. When they see this, and, and, and it's a white guy who deals with this, trust me, they're gonna. The spin is completely different, completely different. But that's America. I'm just saying.